No, still says it's offline. We're on the end. Hi, it's Charlie Bonato. And I'm Brooks Whittington. And hopefully Brooks doesn't talk that loud throughout the rest of the show, and hopefully the audio doesn't cut out at some point randomly throughout the show. But we are here for f the fourth one? Four. Number four. One more on Friday of our Facebook Live pre-show coverage of the 2019 IPSPR convention and trade show. And as we do before every year do with all of these we're gonna start drinking beer because i haven't had anything to eat all day yes and uh what is better than a before noon jesus oh yeah this is Yikes. before noon yes uh 15 abv this is a uh beer from uh turning point which is a local uh local brewery it's doing very well these days uh Brooks the, really hopes they get bought by somebody like rar i really don't um this is called what is it called? Laser Cannon Death Sentence, which uh, you may or may not know is actually uh, from a, a Metalocalypse. Uh, really, a metal band. Metalocalypse, which is a cartoon, actually. Oh. That, uh, is, there, is there a metal band by the same name? Uh, unfortunately not, but the uh, cartoon was awesome. Sure. Everybody on Facebook, tell me how awesome it is, because it's pretty awesome. Um, the beer is also pretty awesome. It is a 15.3% ABV beer. Let me see that. I forget what's in it. Uh, Asian bourbon barrels for 10 to 13 months with coconut, coconut nibs, and vanilla beans. Awesome. Just what we need in this early in the morning. Yeah, no, I, I certainly am looking forward to it, quote unquote. Well, cheer. Zuh. All right. Um, that's actually quite good. It is good. Reminds me of... Um, Reminds me of the, the uh, second release, I guess it is, of Bourbon County Vanilla. Mm. So the good release. It's got a lot of vanilla. It would be B Bourbon County Vanilla Rye. Yeah. Can you take that off the table so it doesn't stain? I can. I'm sure the readers really appreciate it since it was in frame. But, uh, I thought you said sting. Stain. All right. Um, so uh, Bricks is going to put up the slideshow. We're going to talk about one of two contests that we have currently going on today, and that is the wrong PowerPoint. Um, huh. So well, I fixed that. Brooks, do you want to talk about this hutch cutter? Yes. So the hutch cutter. This is the uh, one of the contests. is going to be awesome. It is a uh, hutch cutter. It is ivory skull cutter, second edition, with a hand sewn leather pouch. You gotta leave a comment on any post published. No, nope. uh, you changed the video over apparently, so they've got to see that fun stuff. All mm. right, keep just don't mm. worry. About All it. right, um, leave a comment. Any com uh, comment on any post published, published between between June fifteenth and June twenty first on halfwheel dot com. Uh, one winner will be selected at random, and uh, you have to have a U.S. continental address. Really yeah. cool cutter. It's actually based on the uh, XI, uh, the uh, the uh, Zycart XI, and uh, he basically just um, for, uh, uh, custom makes the uh, the actual uh, edges there. Yeah, no, and actually for this one, um, I don't know if we may need to change the rules, but uh, we'll ship this anywhere as long as we can ship it. Yep. Unlike some of the other prizes. So uh, this is the actual cutter. It is the second edition of these. Uh, and it is uh, one of ten of the second edition. So, and actually, or it's actually, you know, it isn't. It's signed on the back, yes. Yeah, so it is zero one of ten. You totally can't see that, but on the back right here, there is a a signature from Just Hutch. Trust us. And I'm going to now put this in its pouch and put it away. Uh, for the person who just asked if we have announced the contest winner for the humidor, we have. Um, it was. I can't remember the, the guy's name, um, but uh, he has contacted us, and we will be shipping it out to him today. So it probably was not you, whoever asked that. All right. Uh, audio is still working. Awesome. That's good. Yep. So um, in addition to that contest, we have another one. Yes. Right, Brooks? That's correct. So we have another contest, which is the uh, Drew Estate Contest, which uh, basically... Oh, that stuff is over there. 
uh, basically Drew Estate every year for the IPCPR show. They produce different types of, uh, whoops, probably shouldn't have done that, uh, different types of uh, products um, where they, uh, they custom paint things and do that kind of thing. This is a street sign. Uh, they've done um, things like uh, skateboards and tennis shoes. And non-tennis shoes. And uh, tobacco uh, presses. Cigar molds. Molds. Okay. Um, things like that. Uh, they, we don't know what this year is going to be, um, but uh, it's going to be awesome, whatever it is. They did tobacco leaves one year, which was really interesting to actually have a, uh, a, a painting on a tobacco leaf. Um, but it's going to be awesome. It'll be shipped after the show. Uh, your contest rules. Uh, leave a comment on any public... Whoops. Wrong one. Leave a comment on today's Facebook Live contest. Comments has to be left on Facebook, and one winner will be selected. You will get your prize after the show in July sometime. We don't know what it is, so. Yeah, and I still need to announce the winners of our last two shows. I will go in and do that today, I yes. promise. And, there, and it'll be awesome. Yeah, so uh, with that said, um, today's show is about accessories, um, and... This is a probably the toughest one that we have to do because up until yesterday morning, there may have not actually been 10 accessories to talk about for this show. So we try to put together the 10 most interesting ones or the ones that we're most interested in. Um, on our end, there, we should point out that there is maybe only like 20 of them so far that have been announced. So not uh, perhaps not the greatest selection for us to choose from. And uh, we've tried to order them we have ordered them in from one to 10 or 10 to one in terms of our most interesting picks. Uh, however, like that was averaged out. Um, so it is what it is, but, um, I, I would suspect that these will not be the 10 most interesting accessories we see at the trade show. Some of them certainly will make the list at the end of the show, but I, I would imagine there's going to be a lot of other stuff. There are many companies that have not announced very much of anything. Um, and I'm not sure any of the accessory companies are done. And then there's companies like Prometheus that just hasn't announced anything yet. And, and yeah. always, they always have good stuff. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it happens about every year where you have accessory companies that just basically don't announce stuff until right before the show or, uh, or not all their stuff. So it's, uh, it's fairly standard operating procedure, it seems. And uh, so we've got the best, uh, the best things that we think of that have been announced so far. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? All right, number 10. We're going to go with the Vertigo Hangman. Now, this is a V-cutter on a uh, key ring. Uh, this may be a little bit familiar to people who've been around for a while. If you recall, the Zycar had the VX key chain on a, with a V-cutter uh, V on it. Uh, however, that one was priced at about 45 bucks, give or take. This is actually $3.99. Uh, it cuts up to 62 ring gauge. It comes with a black metal body. I mean, a black plastic body, obviously, because it's $3.99. Um, but it is three inches long and one and a half inches wide. But the price of three ninety nine is really what I thought was uh, really interesting about this. Uh, if you can cut cigars with it at three ninety nine, it's just uh, it's almost a no brainer if you like uh, V cuts. Uh, yeah, this has to be the cheapest V cutter we've we've seen on the uh, the market, right? Your Mister uh, Cutter person? Yes, absolutely. And but it's not the first time we've seen V cutters on a keychain. No, no, I mentioned the, the uh, Zycar. Yeah, yeah. uh, yeah. And that's Maybe it? you weren't listening to that. No, I yeah. heard the Zycar. Uh, no, sure as far one. as I know, that was the only one that's been... Uh, and they've discontinued that, correct? As far as you... Uh, they, it's the not VX, on the website anymore, so I assume they discontinued it. The VX2 keychain? It. Correct. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Somebody Zycar, tell me if they discontinued that. Shout out to quality importers. All right. So that's uh, number 10? Yes, number 10. And there is no number 9. Okay, because we have a tie. We do. So we have a tie for number 8. The uh, uh, we're gonna go with the Kentucky Double, which is an ashtray and coaster combination. Now this comes in three different uh, wood grains finishes, um, and includes a ashtray and I said it's a coaster. Um, now they've this has already been released. This has been on the market for a little while, but the company has actually this is their debut at the show, um, at the IPCPR show. Um, $99 is what these cost. Um, extremely nice looking, uh, design. Um, I like it quite a bit. I'm not a big fan of horseshoes in general. 
uh, or horses. I am actually scared of horses. What about hand grenades? Um, no, no, I love hand grenades, but uh, horses not so much. Um, but I still like the uh, the design, and I think it looks uh, I think it looks really nice. I think I'd love to see it in person to see exactly uh, exactly how uh, well made it is, considering how well made it looks. Also, uh, aircraft aircraft grade aluminum is what that is uh, is made with. Yeah, no one actually knows what that means, but uh, it means you can fly an aircraft made out of it if you had that much. And a lot of other structural components. And the engine and, you know. No, I, my curious, I, I think that, um, I'm curious to see, you're covering the booth, I believe. I am. Kentucky Double. But I'm curious to see uh, what, how that does at the show. It's priced at $100. It's like an ideal sort of gift item just as we come off Father's Day. Um, and, you know, retailers are always looking for things in the holiday season. And, and something like that is a is a nice price point where you're not going to drown out too many potential gift buyers, um, but they're also going to get something substantial and, and something that's made in America and, and with the right um, types of materials. It's something that's maybe not the most innovative thing. There certainly are other like singular portable ashtrays, but the coaster is a nice addition, and I think the package is finished off well. So I'm really curious to see if they gain traction with retailers. It is very tough for any of the non-main accessory brands, so your your Zycars, your Calibris, your DuPonts, your Lotus, Jetlines, et cetera, all those companies, um, everyone that's not in that sort of group of you know core lighter cutter humidor companies, they they really I think struggle at the trade show to gain new retailers because um, it's just not like if you're going to be like oh we're, what, should we go see an accessory booth or should we go to the Padron booth? I think most people are going going to the Padron booth. Um, and so, but I, th I think this one has a lot of promise and, um, I'm also much like you curious to see what the products look like. Yes. And just a suggestion for a Kentucky double, uh, perhaps to sell one without a, uh, horseshoe for people who are afraid of horses. All right. What's next? What are you not afraid of animal wise? Uh, I don't like horses and bees. Everything else I'm good with. I feel like that's maybe, maybe like really big spiders. They freak me I out. I feel like that's not the case. They freak me out. All right. Well, next we have another one of mine which is the um, uh, Hutch African Big Game Series. Now, this is, uh, as we mentioned with Hutch, with the, uh, the contest we have here, uh, Hutch is uh, custom-making each one of these. Uh, they come in five different designs, lion, leopard, rhino, elephant, and cape buffalo. Uh, and uh, this is also based on the Zykar XI uh, cutter, but he adds the uh, African black wood to the sides. Now, this is not ivory. Um, that's for, I think, fairly obvious reasons. Um, but they, uh, he, they are custom made and each one will cost $500. Uh, I'm really interested to see how they look compared to the other stuff that he does. Um, I think myself, I'd probably go with the leopard. What do you think? Uh, I mentioned this to you the other day. I wish that there was a tiger, but unfortunately that's not part of the African big game, mm, big five game. Uh, which I guess maybe is good for the Tigers because that means they're not being hunted uh, who, as much. Apparently, they're moving to Texas. They are. There are more Tigers here uh, than anywhere else. And if anyone's watching and has a baby Tiger, I would really like to uh, play with it um, <clears throat> or use it as a pet. But not in a creepy way. Nope. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I um, I like the... I find the elephant to be kind of one of the more interesting aspects here with its um, other things. But is that a cheetah? Uh, no, it doesn't say cheetah. It says uh, leopard. leopard. Sorry. The leopard. Uh, I like the that whole thing with the eyes. Yeah. And it's almost almost a tiger. Maybe I could like yeah, go enough. in there with a pencil and it's close enough. make it look like a tiger. Uh, and it's it, those are $500. I don't know if he announced um, like how many he's making. But, uh, I can't imagine there's many of them. Interesting fact. No discount for the set. You buy all five of them, it's $2,500. Really? Yeah. Huh. One would think that there would you know, be, so. yeah. But you, if you buy the set, he will make sure that you like. If you buy the set and you want all number sevens, he will give you all number sevens. All right. Um. Yeah. I mean, that will be relevant to like two numbers, one and eight. And why eight? Chinese. Chinese believe eight is a lucky number. Okay. Hence why all the. Uh, Hence why that you just can't see it, but we have the 2008 Boulevard Edition Original for China that was eight, uh, boxes of eight, 2008 boxes priced at 8,888, whatever the Chinese currency is. Hmm. Well, fun facts. I don't believe in uh, luck, so there That's we go. Good. All right, here we go. 
Number seven is uh, my first entry onto the list. It is the Zykar Tactical One. So this was announced yesterday on Half Wheel. It is the uh, newest lighter from Zykar. It is a follow-up to the Tactical Triple, which debuted earlier this year, which we haven't reviewed yet, and I don't know if we're going to review the Tactical Triple. My guess is we'll let Patrick decide which one he wants to review. Um, I'm actually more interested in this one, but you know we'll see what Patrick has to has to think about uh, between the two of them. Uh, this slider is interesting for a couple reasons. So uh, it's got a wider flame. Um, it's a 10 millimeter flame, which Jimmy Muto from uh, Quality Importers, which is the parent company of Zycar, told me that he thinks that depending on the fuel, so basically if you use Zycar's crazy high performance fuel, then um, he thinks you can get 25 to 50% uh, more a uh, wider flame or a bigger flame than a typical lighter. It also has on the top, you can see, and this is not the first time we've seen this feature. A couple lighters have it, but it's pretty rare still. Uh, there's a, there's the lid is uh, shaped with a concave in the middle of it. So that way you can place your cigar inside of it. So it can serve as a cigar rest. Um, there's also the utility clip that you can see there. It's very similar to um, a knife or a typical EDC style product. Uh, the clips are removable um, via some screwdrivers. And then the entire bottom has got uh, the fuel adjustment knob. So it's a uh, you know, made so that's a little bit easier to adjust. Uh, one thing that's interesting, Jimmy was the, the former designer at Calibri. And one thing that I think Zycar um, maybe lagged behind uh, I, I certainly think that the Calibri over the last few years has had better designs and, and this isn't my favorite design but uh, one thing that's nice to see here is that the Calibri one thing they really I think most people can agree on is they really went out of their way to make sure that you could read the fuel windows easily um, by using the blue so this one uses red but it's got a gigantic fuel window that you can see um, on the side there. So, uh, this will ship in quote unquote fall of 2019 and, um, at $70, it's a pretty expensive single flame lighter from Zycar, but, um, I suspect they will do very well. I think that their demographic is going to eat up products that scream everyday carry. Yeah. I love the look of it. Um, I do love the, uh, the, the cigar rest on it. Uh, Vissel's got one as well that, um, that actually does that. And it became, it was, it's, it's a lot more handy than I expected it to be. Um, I like the fact you can attach it to your belt, but I wonder, you know, you should probably, um, I, I, I hope there's a, like a safety mechanism on it somewhere that, you know, you can't like brush up against it and like, well, I don't know if you want to put it back on the screen. Because that seems I don't really, know that seems like really awkward to me. That I don't know if just... the lid um it pops up automatically. My guess is Jimmy's probably watching this, so maybe we'll get a. Uh... I imagine Jimmy probably thought of that, but uh, just you know. Yeah, I don't know, but um, that's yeah, the first I kinda... thing I thought. Of. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, rub yeah. up against things and yeah, we can see what your set yourself on fire. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, really looking forward to seeing it. No, I, it's um. It's an interesting product, and I'm I'm fascinated to see the designs we see from Jimmy at Zycar. Zycar's design language is certainly, you know, I think Calibri was going much more for a luxury feel than Zycar typically has. Um, not to say that Zycar doesn't make expensive products, they do, but Zycar has a different design language, and I'm curious to see what he does with that. Excuse me, particularly because he didn't just work on luxury designs at Calibri. He also, they had their Firebird brand, so he did some value type products and he also had products that like they've had some racing inspired products and um they've obviously got the quasar stuff that we'll get to that's very different than anything we've ever seen from zycar but i'm curious to see what these designs look like and um i suspect that there is probably another one coming on this list his stuff's amazing i love his designs for sure all right and now for something that we are not going to pronounce yeah no so number six number six Number six is the RVGN, and you can just yeah, Roch Rocher Vigugen, you Kent it, Kentron, number forty two K. Wow, that is a long name. Um, essentially, this is a three D printed ashtray uh, in aluminum. Um, it, well, it is a three D printed ashtray. That exactly yeah. what I said. Yes, no. essentially, it is. Yes. Okay, keep going. <laughs> I mean, it is. <laughs> it is. It is literally, it is, it literally, three, literally, three D printed yes. ashtray. Uh, there's a hundred, uh, hundred ashtrays. We don't have a price on this. They're announcing it at the show. Um, but it is uh, the company, according to them, the company is trying to come back and um, basically make ashtrays more um, relevant again. Instead of just being just little, you know, things you put at, you know, your cigars on or whatever. They want it to be more of a trying piece to of make art. ashtrays great again. Uh, yes. 
<clears throat> um, so the uh, the uh, the design is meant to look something like a, uh, a cigar uh, leaf, uh, uh, tobacco leaf, and uh, that's a th uh, 3D printed, as they said, in aluminum, and um, it's going to be expensive. Uh, it would be packed in handmade wooden boxes that are also can be used as a small humidor. Um, there are a hundred pieces, and I imagine they will not be cheap. Yeah, and there's like some crazy amount of pieces individual pieces that they use to make this correct uh crazy amount i don't know how many Forty two thousand, perhaps yeah I, I don't know if it's that number but it's it was pretty ridiculous uh, i of our large number yeah i really like the look of the ashtray i don't know where my theoretical price limit on paying for it would be um i think personally or the company uh both like i don't think if it was a thousand dollars we'd buy a thousand dollar ashtray regardless of, of who's buying it but at like 400 I think it's going to be more than that, though. Yeah, it's definitely going to be more than I think both those numbers. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, for those curious about RVGN, um, they are a company that makes cigars as well. Their cigars were in those images. We've reviewed two of them, um, including most recently I reviewed the A, which was a lot of fun. Nothing like smoking a cigar for four and a half hours. Um, and uh, their whole idea is to try to bring German engineering to the cigar process. I don't still don't exactly know what that means, but... Um, that they've said for a while they planned on having accessories or at least it's been on base camp for a while internally for us and um that was not what i was expecting because most of the time when you hear cigar maker is going to create accessories it, it typically is we're going to put a paint job on an existing accessory and that was not only is that not an existing accessory it's a completely like different idea i tell, um, I tell you this it is extremely unique and the second you saw it you think wow i've got to see that in person to see what oh it is. absolutely how heavy is it how does it look how does it feel well and because we don't know anyone that's going to buy a ten thousand dollar ashtray um could it be that much $10, i don't know what do you so what do you think it's going to be uh i think it'll come in at 29.99 yeah i was thinking to myself exactly three thousand but um why do you all have to be one more than me uh Maybe. Um, no, I think 3000 is probably a good over under on it. But have they said what material it is? Um, aluminum, yeah, is what they said. Is it aircraft grade? They did not mention oh. that, but I will be sure to ask them. They should come out. If it's not aircraft grade, they should do another one with aircraft grade aluminum and true. they can charge, you know, a one and a half times premium. True, true. All right, number number five. Crap, I don't know where it is. Five. So, number five, I think, is probably the most interesting product on here. Because if you look at that, you go, why on earth are those ugly looking lighters on this list? And um, the reason why is because these these lighters, which are from Bugatti. Um, is ugly? I would not describe the Bugatti Mirage as an attractive looking lighter. Hmm. Uh, but anyway, they're on here. It looks like any typical lighter, um, but it is, in fact, quite different in a couple ways. So the first is that uh, rather than using the typical you take your butane can and you fill it up, uh, the lighter actually just takes a butane can. So you um, you put those, excuse me, 18 milliliter, I believe, butane cans in there. The company says that it will last users for about 30 days. Uh, obviously, it depends. Uh, like, I don't know if that means 30 cigars, but uh, that because that was not really the greatest unit of measurement here but uh, rather than taking a, a butane can and putting it in your lighter uh, and, and refilling it you literally just put the small cans in there um, for those wondering those butane cans don't have a price yet and b uh, or at least they haven't announced it and b uh, you can use them to fill other lighters uh, but they're specifically made for the mirage and if that wasn't enough the more interesting feature is that the jets on the uh on the lighter are replaceable and so uh in the event that you're having issues with your lighter you could buy replacement jets and i presume the other thing is they will probably if this is successful offer upgradable jets and then you could swap them out at home um using a minimal amount of technical expertise uh once again this also hasn't been announced pricing wise the lighter itself is a hundred dollars it has been available through cigars international exclusively at the trade show it will be available to all retailers um and they actually have two of these they have uh another model whose name escapes me um at the moment but uh that is the Bugatti Mirage, um, and I think that it is, uh, I think it's one of the most innovative lighters uh, we have seen in quite some time. I don't know what the last lighter I would say that I, I guess perhaps the flat flame lighters would be like the last time we've seen this. Um, I, 
I don't know if this is the first time that it's been done. I, I feel like it's probably safe to say that there have been other companies that have tried it. Um, but uh, certainly no one has, I think, done it on this sort of scale before. And one thing I'm really curious to see about is, you know, if you break a lighter Brooks, how confident are you, like, outside of if you can physically see what's broken, how confident are you to know, like, what is actually broken? Um, I would put that confidence level at about, uh, let's call it 3%. Give or take. Yeah. And so I think that that's a, a very salient point here, which is that, like, it's nice that you can replace the, the heads if the, the butane torch element breaks. But uh, the problem is, is that I would imagine that, and I'd be fascinated to know if, like, Zykar could provide statistics on their lighters about this, uh, about, like, what the percentage, like, where the breakage actually happens. Because at least with me, like, most of the lighters that I feel like I break are because of the trigger mechanism has either become dislodged or there's something inside of it or it's getting stuck or whatever it is. But it's normally, I normally don't go, oh yeah, the lighter is broken because the actual nozzles are the issue. And so I would be, now if, if Bugatti ends up not selling them, if it's like a, that's a warranty item. So like you break your lighter and they just send you the replacement or like we can either do this for you or you can do it at home. That would be one thing, but like it would be very insult to injury if you break your lighter, your $100 lighter, and then you're like, hey, let me go out and buy, let's say, a $15 replacement head. And it's like, well, turns out that has nothing to do with why my lighter is broken. Um, and so I think the concept is um, smart in a lot of ways, but I don't know if it will solve the like users breaking the, the jets. And I also would, once again, like I'd love to know some stats about what the percentage of lighter issues are related to the, the jets actually failing. Yeah, so I talked to uh, Garang over at uh, Vissel about this, actually, specifically, and he said that the most common things that they see on their uh, lighters to break is the trigger. Yeah. Trigger mechanism. So... Yeah, I would venture to guess trigger mechanism is probably number one. Um, number two, at least, and this is just based off of the lighters that I use, the number two issue that I have is, for whatever reason, occasionally the uh, regulators will... Um, either be overridden or will fail and so the lighter will shoot like way up in the air and then you need to take it apart and adjust the regulator down and then i would say number three although i don't have this issue as much but i've certainly seen a handful of lighters that do is probably the um the actual tank's ability to retain butane so that uh you know that pressure valve breaking yeah whenever one of mine breaks i just take it to kent at the elite cigar cafe and he fixes it um every time is, every time mm -hmm. this is uh fascinating to me um, I love the look of it. I, I think it's it's unique, which is very unusual. You don't think it's ugly? Uh, you know, I think it can be considered ugly. Okay. I also think it could be considered beautiful in any number of ways. We're all beautiful in our own way, Charlie. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that it's awesome that it uh, that it has um, some really innovative uh, products in one lighter. I'll I'll definitely be checking it out. Yeah. No. And I this has got. I I don't know if we've already ordered one, but certainly. This will be a lighter that Patrick absolutely reviews this year because it's, I mean, it, it's one of the most interesting lighters. And Mitch Smith just brought up a very interesting point. I hope it's Mitch. His last, his first name is cut off, but I'm guessing Mitch. Yep. So Mitch Smith brought up an interesting point, which is that uh, they could offer different uh, lighter combination or different jet combinations. So they could offer a flat flame. They could offer a... a well, you mentioned, they, you mentioned they could upgrade and that kind of they thing. They could I offer, mean, yeah. Upgrade. I guess I was thinking more in the idea of like... You know, if they come up with better flame, like if they come up with a better valve that's more efficient or better jet that's more efficient. But yeah, no, that's an interesting point, Mitch, is that they could come up with a fully modular lighter system. Although I don't know how big the market would be for that because like at $100, you could just buy, you could buy your flat flame and you could buy a single flame. Excuse me, you could buy a triple flame, you could buy a soft flame and, and probably, you know, for 100 bucks, still have a nice collection of Gentline lighters. Sure, but they won't look like that. Uh, no, Jetline does make some stuff that you can just like color the dots in. But no, uh, certainly a fascinating lighter. And um, yeah, I, I think uh, definitely curious to see it in person and play around with it. If anyone has one, if anyone's purchased one from CI in the comment section, if you could let me know how it's going, we, we certainly would love to hear I'm your really, experience. I'm really interested to see how, how heavy it is. It, it looks kind of light to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested to see how heavy it is. What's interesting about it, I don't have a picture of it, unfortunately, up there, but if you go on the website and you type in Bugatti Mirage, you will see there's another lighter they announced at the same time that has a much different uh, head to it, so a much different jet mechanism. And so I'm curious to see how that replacement looks like, because that one doesn't look like a scenario where you could pop in a flat flame. All right, number four. Yeah, number four uh, is going to be pretty quick here. 
Uh, so it is the Daniel Marshall humidification system. Uh, I recently reviewed a Daniel Marshall humidor, and I mentioned that uh, I have some issues with the Daniel Marshall humidors. I think that they are, the boxes are built wonderfully. But with every single humidor he has made that I have seen, I have three issues. One is that the hygrometers that are included, the things that measure relative humidity and temperature, are awful. Uh, number two is that the big box that you see there um, that contains the humidifier is basically not removable. And that means that you lose a ton of uh, usable space in the lid because it's so big. And three, the humidifiers that they include are uh, absolute garbage. Um, they are florist foam, which is the green stuff that has been used for many years. It is better than nothing, but it is not almost great. not as good as nothing. Uh, no, I mean, it. at least they provide some humidification to it. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, there's no way to regulate them. Um, the solution that companies include to do so, that uh, propylene glycol solution is not there to actually like set it so that it perfectly works at 70 percent propylene glycol is there to do two things the primary purpose is to reduce the uh, ability for it to mold and the second thing that it does is that it does reduce the amount of moisture that can leave it but it doesn't like magically set it to 70 percent um and for humidors that cost you know 700 typically uh to 12 1300 dollars uh the inclusion of florist foam is is not great so uh, last year, Daniel Marshall announced that, uh, or told me that he would have a new humidification system on display at the show. That didn't happen. He has told me again that he will have it this year. We will see. Uh, I don't know any more details about it other than that it is some new system. Um, if I had to take a guess, it's probably going to be some sort of bead or gel-based solution. But we will, or super absorbent polymers technically is what they are. Um, but I will see. Um, or I'm very curious to see when I go by the booth because um, I've... I've said this is an issue. You can like, um, if you want to go back to that picture, Brooks, real quick. I can. Uh, you can like take bovidas and shove them in that box, but it, it's kind of awkward. I've asked bovida like, can you make a, a a humidor brick or sizes that would fit in a humidor brick, and um, they haven't done that yet. But uh, I I would love to replace it with something that is more usable. Um, and so I'm very curious to see what it comes up with. There aren't a ton of uh, innovations in humidification products on a regular basis. So if he actually some, has something like completely new, that would be very, very interesting. I just feel like you should just put a boveda in there and just forget about it. I just, I don't, I don't feel like that it's, you know, worth dealing with. No, I'm, well, so that's generally what I do. The problem though, is that, um, that box once again is not removable. So if you don't like, you can fit some bovedas in there, but it's kind of annoying because you lose all this space. Um, and then you just you don't put anything in it, and it's like okay, well, look, if he puts if he comes out with super absorbent polymers, which for those of you that don't know, there are like the uh, there are the small beads that you see that the companies um, sell like heartfelt, etc. Those are one type of technology, and then there's pretty much every other like bead or gel based solution, um, and uh, those are what are called super absorbent polymers, and they are uh, pieces of rock or crystal and what they do is they absorb uh, a ridiculous amount of moisture compared to their actual weight so they expand um, we have some at the office that expand uh, anywhere between 50 to 100 times their size uh, they're used by a variety of manufacturers um, they're not the best but they are better than fluorosome because um, in one major way which is that they really don't mold with any of the sort of uh, propensity that, that Florsum does. Um, some companies like Zycar, that little gel solution they used, that is largely super absorbent polymers with some propylene glycol, et cetera. And that works better, um, but we haven't seen a ton of like humidification bricks per se that really have been able to harness that, uh, that technology and make it anywhere close to as accurate as something like a Boveda or an electronic humidifier for that matter. Yeah. Yeah, just put a Boveda in it. All right, number... Hold on one second. Okay. So, but Bovida should definitely be looking working on that because that'd be awesome. Just throw a throw a pack in there in that uh, space and be done with it. Uh, we're some technical issues. Gonna have some dead air for a minute, but uh, yeah, we should talk about horses. I don't think they can hear anything or see anything for that matter. Oh, we're down completely? Yeah, I don't. Hmm. Oh. 
I mean, before we got to number one, that's sad. Brian says you can see us on fine on YouTube. I just saw that. Um, and I, I know exactly what's taking place. I'm just trying to... Brian, can you hear us on YouTube or just yeah, see no, us? Yeah, no, no, YouTube's fine. Um... I'm glad I didn't see anything bad. Who watches on YouTube? Brian, shouldn't you be watching on Facebook? Uh, the site has its YouTube. Yeah, no, Brian, um, and for those of you that are watching on the site or on YouTube, there isn't an issue there. It's on Facebook. Freaking Facebook, man. And can the people on f Facebook... Okay, you're now... It's now told me that the live video has ended. For those wondering, Brian Burke cannot watch Facebook on his work or at his work. I was wondering that. Yeah. It makes uh, sense. That's an interesting thing. Um, all right, so... Uh, All right, for those of you on YouTube and on the site, give me one second. We're gonna we have to restart Facebook, unfortunately. Um, which, uh, yeah, uh, not not my favorite thing to do. But um, we just had it cut out for some reason. All right, so um, we are going live on Facebook, maybe. Do, do, do. All right, so um, I'm going to give everyone like 30 seconds or so to catch up. Sorry for the, the people that were watching on Facebook. Hopefully you come back to this. And for those of you that were watching on YouTube, sorry for the, the awkward three or four minutes of the delay there. Unfortunately, one of these days, we will get through this without some technical issues, but today is just not going to be that one. So uh, I don't know exactly what happened. I just got a notification on our streaming platform that Facebook had stopped working. And so we unfortunately have to restart it. Um, we were I think, on uh, number I think, four. I think that's probably Facebook's fault, not ours though. I don't know if it was Facebook's fault or if it was I the... I feel like we can blame them. Uh, we probably could, yeah. or if it was the streaming platform people. So um, I'm gonna. Well, number we were number three. Number three. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Well, I'm gonna. Okay. So now we have at least one person on Facebook. Um, number four was the Daniel Marshall, and then I just cut out. Uh, yep. So we're gonna give people a couple more seconds to get on here, and then we will resume. I think we should have a title slide of some sort. Well, we do. Technical but not, issues. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. We should just put that in between like every slide at this point. Hmm. Every slide should have a like technical issue. All right. Uh, number three. Number three. Oh, uh, number three is the Colibri 
Quasar table lighter. Um, and it's not on the screen. Nope. All right, so it looks like this. Uh, for those of you, we probably should have gotten the tabletop cutter. I still can. Uh, no. Uh, so for those of you that think like, oh, this looks familiar, uh, it, it is quite familiar. So this is the latest in Calibri's Quasar series, um, and it is a lighter, as the, the name implies, and as you can see in the picture. So it is not. that's not a reflection. It is two of those um, square cube things uh, stacked on top of each other. They have the hobnail pattern that all the rest of the Quasar accessories, so there's been an ashtray, a humidor, three different cutters, punch, the pocket cutter, and then the V cutter, or then the desktop cutter. There has been uh, another lighter. The Astoria had the Quasar pattern on it. And is that it? That's it. Um, so this is the seventh one, I think. Seventh or eighth one. Seventh of it. Um, and it is a tabletop uh, or, or you know, non-portable lighter. Um, it looks exactly like the, I don't know how actually big it is because we can't really tell that in the product shots, but it looks like it's the, the desktop cutter that's just been stacked on top of each other. It's got a triple flame. It's angled like the rest of the Calibri triple flames are, I think at this point all are. Um, and it is priced at $150. It will begin shipping in July. Um, and, uh, I can, out of all the accessories that we are, have, have gone over t so far and, and we'll go over. Uh, I can assure you that I will be buying this one in red um, to match uh, many of our other Quasar accessories. Hmm. Yes, I'm interested to see how much uh, fuel this thing holds and how big it is uh, in actuality, since uh, we can't really tell, as you said. Yeah, I suspect, I, I think it would be very, um, I don't think it would be the smartest idea if they made it, if, the, if those cubes or hobnail cube things aren't the same size as the uh, cutter, the desktop cutter, then that would be very awkward. Well, here's the thing. The desktop cutter is extremely heavy. Yeah. Very heavy. If you've got two of those and they're the same type heaviness... But I don't think that the desktop cutter is heavy because of the, the shell. I think that's more due to the internal body. Well, sure, but... Uh, yeah, but if they if all that is is a fuel tank... Mm, I don't know. We'll see. I I, 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 I'm interested to see it. Yeah. I'm with you. If it weighs double the amount of the desktop cutter, there's a problem. But um, it would be very odd if that was like a 75% a scale model. Because mm -hmm. you would just like... And I will point out that like I, I love it. We have a right over there is the the big Daniel Marshall uh, Quasar Humidor. The original. Um, well, the, yeah, there was only a couple, two releases. Um, I, I love them, but like they are, uh, the Quasar stuff is not the same color depending on what accessory it is. This is due to the fact that they are not the same material. So like that Humidor that's over there uh, is not the same, the body of the Humidor is not the same shell as what the, the cutter, for example, has. The cutter is metal that is like polycarbonate or something some sort of synthetic and so you just can't get the colors to be identical i mean you could you could it would probably take forever but they just don't so like the red stuff which i particularly enjoy uh the red ashtray uh a doesn't look like the picture they have on the promotional items uh but the red ashtray and the red humidor are uh, you're the photographer they are 77 shades of red off oh at least yeah. 77 shades yes um, they're not the same, no, but as you said, it's probably the materials issue as well as photography when you're doing product shots, very different as well. So, well, no, but like we can take the, the ashtray and the, the saturation level and put them on the table. Like we could put them in the same photograph and they're not even close to the same color. They're not. Um, but they're red. I mean, they're as close to the same color the as all of the red. blue stuff is behind us. Like it's, they're, they're both red. You are correct about that, but they are not the same color of red. Mm -hmm. All right. Number two. All right. Number two is. Oops. Number two is going to make me laugh. Number two. Uh, that's yours, not mine, buddy. It is. Number two is uh, batshit crazy, is what mm. number two is. Uh, so this is the S2 DuPont Apollo collection. Um, DuPont. And I am going to attempt to explain this without laughing. Uh, Good luck. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it, it is. Even for DuPont, this is relatively or fairly crazy so um it is uh this is the high end so for those of you that aren't familiar with dupont limited editions they uh they tend to make three different items per collection so they make uh at the top end they'll do something like this uh and for those wondering this is twenty seven thousand euros which due to some terrible exchange rates at the moment depending on where you live uh means that it's roughly about 30 gram and then um so this is limited to eight pieces uh i would be curious to see if they sell more than two of them 
Um, and then they will make another collection, uh, which is basically just the lighter that you see in the top part of your screen. Um, and that is limited, I think, to 288 pieces. And then they will make um, probably another lighter and pen set. Um, and that will probably not have nine diamonds on it like that lighter does. Uh, for those wondering, the lighter by itself is uh, 6,400 euro um, or euros. So uh, this uh, craziness includes the base that took God knows how long to make. It's got obsidian is what's been used. And then the, the b very bottom piece is uh, plated, I assume, in silver. It just says silver finish. Uh, and then it is a lighter, and it, for those of you, once again, not familiar with Dupont, they like to make these uh, artistic pieces, um, and they like to make, like, bases and, and types of display, like, almost like a, you know, an art project. And, um, let's, and let's be clear, they are amazing. They are they are really yeah. amazing. Uh, you know, the artistic ability and, and what they put into it is really, really amazing. Yeah, for those of you who want to see, like, some of the ridiculous stuff, just go to our IPSPR coverage of S.T. DuPont over the years. Last year, they had a $300,000 motorized hot air balloon that was, like, made to look like Fabergé eggs, and it's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so uh, this one's interesting because it actually uh, it includes a USB flash drive that's built into it. And I think if I go to the next slide so that little like gold piece uh it the so the lighter has an attachment so it can be suspended in air for some reason um and then uh that little gold piece that you see to the left of the lighter that is a usb flash drive that contains part of a of a meteor that came of a lunar meteor so a meteor that came from the moon and landed on earth uh the usb flash drive contains a certificate of authenticity for the lunar meteor for some reason um and well, they're not cheap yeah well i don't know how much a lunar meteor is uh it is a lot less expensive than a, a moon rock though um and anyway so uh Indeed. for those of you that are curious about the lighter i don't know why you would at this point but if you are curious about the lighter it's uh they're pretty standard s dupont uh lighter uh which means dual flame it is uh got it's got nine diamonds on it so um each of uh you can see like some stars in the background those are diamonds, um, and then uh, there's also uh, a stone, the blue stone that you can see there as well is not a diamond, different stone, and uh, the astronaut is made of solid silver, uh, so a lot going on there, and um, I, uh, if any of you buy it, uh, I would love to uh, love to hear your thoughts on it. I'd love to it, photograph it. Yeah, see how it works. It's, would uh, you love to photograph it? I would. It seems like it would be a pain in the ass. Oh, it would be a pain in the ass, but uh, boy, it, uh, it's, it's just, my son would love that. He's uh, he's big into you. Uh, big into getting him a thirty thousand dollar gift to to play around with. Yeah, with the moon rock and yeah. everything. You know, take it to, to show and tell. Um, yeah. yeah, he'd love it. He just put together the uh, Lego uh, Apollo Eleven. Well, this is and, exactly uh, like the Lego. That's I what mean, I'm saying. It yeah. looks just exactly the same to me. Yeah, I mean the people at Dupont. It's not like mm -hmm. they you know they haven't spent all their they kinda, life. They kind of ripped off, kind of ripped off the, Apollo, the the Lego one. Looks just exactly the same. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really, really fascinating. I'm, I'd love to see them every year uh, and see what they come up with. And uh, this this looks just off. Yeah, it's completely off the wall. The wall. Yeah, or outer space. I was going to say off the chain, but I think I'm too old to say stuff like that. So, number one. Oh, we're doing that? We're yeah, just gonna, we're, doing, we're just going right okay. into it. Ready? Number one. This is the Zykar. Crap. How do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Enso? Enso? All right. I'll give you that. Uh, Zykar Enso. So, basically... Uh, this is, if you recall, the uh, one of the best cutters that I've ever used in my life. The XO um, is uh, one of, I just love. I just really, really love it. And uh, this is uh, very, very similar to similar to that. Only uh, the handle only has uh, one blade. So instead of two blades with the XO, you only have to push down one blade. It is the same size as the XO, uh, almost exactly the same size, in fact. Um, but it comes in at ninety nine dollars. It has uh, six different s color finishes, and it is will cut. Let me see what does it say here. Seventy two ring gauge, but will fit a sixty eight ring gauge cigar right through it. And uh, I am really looking forward to seeing how it actually compares to the XO, and if there's a major difference in terms of balance and things of that nature. One of the things I loved about the XO is is the balance that you have when you're cutting. Uh, just I, it's it's second to none as far as I'm concerned, um, but uh, I'm really interested to see how this changes that. Also, neon green—that's my color. 
Neon green is neon green color. It's awesome. Would not have guessed that. Yes. But yeah. I love I love the look of it, and uh, uh, I w- I was hoping that they would do a, a thinner version of some sort. It nope. may not be possible, um, but uh, this looks to be the same size. Um, but I'm really interested to compare it compared to the XO. Yeah, I mean, you're the cutter specialist here. I think the XO has one of, like, I think if we were to rank cuts, like, on a 10-point scale, the XO is probably a 10 out of 10 in terms of the cleanness of the cut. Uh, yes, consistency as well, which is a big part of it as well. Yeah. However, it's not, uh, for me at least, and I think there's probably plenty of people that are in that same boat, not the most enjoyable cutter to actually use to cut a cigar. Uh, I can understand how that could be the case. I disagree because I, every time I click that thing open, I feel like that it's just, it just, it, it makes, it fills me with joy. And, oh, I, mean, uh, when and I, well, I feel like it's. Yeah, when I pick up the cutter and then when I like. You know, I start playing around with the blades. That feels great. But then actually trying to maneuver a cigar into the cutter is kind of a, it, like it, it's not as easy as it is with many other cutters. It's the same issue I have actually with the DXI, the, the teardrop cutter. Like I think the XI's cut, generally speaking, pretty well. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, it's kind of an awkward like I don't feel like I have as much control as I do with a traditional um, you know, double guillotine cutter. Well, I think the XI is a little bit different because the hole is typically smaller than the uh, the XO. And I think the larger hole gives you a little bit more control. But I do understand exactly what you're saying. That's going to be a meme. Um, yeah, no, I, I guess my issue with the XI is that, or with the XO, both of them, is that they don't, like, in the hand, with a double guillotine cutter, I feel like I have a, a ton more control and ability to make sure that I, have, like, the angle of cut that I'm trying to achieve, like, I'm actually going for. Whereas, like, with the XO, it's like... Yeah, if I'm going to Dickman cut everything, which for those of you that don't know, that means to cut at an angle. Um, like, sure, that would work. But I, I just don't like it's so bulky that it, it kind of is a pain in the ass. I'm curious to see if the single action fixes that. Hmm. Um, but it, it like the more I think about it, it doesn't change the fact that in my hand, the thing is just gigantic and very bulky. Um, well, you have small hands, so sure. that may be the reason. Um, and I understand how you could say that, but you're wrong. So... Mm. Uh, how many cigars have you cut with the uh, the XO in the last? Oh my three goodness months? gracious! How many? So many. Uh, zero. So very, so few. <laughs> no, because I'm always I'm always testing another zero. cutter. Uh, cut zero. Um, all right. So uh, yeah, but uh, really looking forward to seeing it. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the difference and and seeing how it feels differently in the hand and see if that cut that does uh, fix the problem you have with it. So yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so we're gonna go through some comments very quickly. We have seven minutes to do so, and I don't know how the best way to do this is. So I'm going to start with comments on the old, the, the first feed, and then we will move over to new ones. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, Mike Powery says that he uh, said do the beer talk, but as far as accessories, he wants to see flat flame lighters or new limited edition cutters. Don't think we've seen any new limited edition cutters announced yet. Um, Sorry, did he say he liked the beer talk or didn't like the beer talk? No, he said do the beer talk. He, oh, didn't, right. he actually didn't say either one. Um, Anthony says, can't wait to get my hands on all the new releases you speak of. I think that was about the cigars, not the accessories. Nathan, we went over. We have announced the Humidor winner. And once again, we will announce the DE stuff shortly. Mitch Smith says, want to see the Enso? Uh, great. You, you did, number one. Um, and I think that was, was the number one on your list as well? Indeed it was. Yeah, so I think the Enso was number one on, on both of our lists in terms, I mean, like that, I'm just fascinated to see kind of how it looks and how it functions. Um, Bob Finley, oh, Spencer Workman says, how do you all, f- how do y'all feel about the trade show happening so I much feel great. Oh. earlier this year? Uh, yeah, so I'm not impressed, but, um, you know. It, I will say it's this. It's different, it's different next year, so. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think, um, on, at the moment, one thing that I, I have seen is that I don't think companies, particularly like a month out, I, many companies just weren't as prepared as they typically are because I think they hadn't realized that it's substantially earlier. I mean, they, they certainly knew it, but um, the amount of announcements that we're doing this week isn't really different than what's typically taken place. The, the big difference is the amount, amount of announcements that were happening two weeks ago was far less than what we normally see three weeks out or four weeks out from the show. Um, I. On the other hand, I will say that one thing that I am particularly happy about is that um, 4th of July is after the show, even if it means that we're going to be working for quite a bit of it, just because 
um, having the whole 4th of July holiday before the show. And perhaps we'll see. Maybe it'll be different once it actually happens. But one thing that's been very annoying is like having 4th of July the week before the show just causes a major inconvenience because uh, most people aren't really like willing to do or aren't actually like pretending that they are working. They are doing some work. But it, it creates this weird thing of like, are we going to actually celebrate the 4th of July? But like, we really need to get work done. However, it's a Tuesday and yet no one's in the office. It's this weird conundrum that only applies to us. Uh, but anyway. Do, do, do. Uh, lots of comments about your specificity of the horseshoe and you not liking horseshoes. I really don't like. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, I don't like I don't mind horseshoes. I got nothing against horseshoes. I just don't like horses. Um... You know, let me let me actually be clear about that. I actually don't mind horses at all. I love petting them. I love being around them. I just uh, I was thrown when I was younger, and I can't get on them. Uh, it's a you know, it's a mental thing. All right. Um, Someone wants to know if you can bring a lighter fluid on the plane. Um, I suppose if it's under the minimum, you know, if it meets the TSA requirement, I bet you probably could get away with it. But they'd I, probably take it away anyway. TSA is uh, not known for. Yeah, I, well, I don't think they would find. Like, I don't think they would realize what it is. But it, I'm guessing that it's probably not actually allowed under. I wouldn't try it. Um, Matt says, I'm honestly surprised most humidor companies are not just shifting flat out to Bovida, similar to Zycrosh Travel Humidors, with you on that. 100%. And then the audio stopped working. There were some other comments in between, but we didn't get to them. Okay, so, uh, now to the second Facebook Live feed. We're only going to take a few more questions, because we got to get out of here. If yeah, hard. We have, uh, to, I don't know. Three, three minutes. minutes left. Nope, that's the same one. Uh, Danny, Va Danny Vasquez, I actually have been to the Remacraft headquarters. I think I was actually there before you were. I was there for the, the soft opening. Before Danny Vasquez or before I? No, no, I think I was there before Danny had ever been to the, the headquarters. It's an amazing place. Um, like Utopia. All right, let's see if I can quickly go through someone. Uh, Tony Morales wants to know what was number five. Brooks, can you tell Tony what number five was? Number five was the... Uh, that. That. Uh, number five was the Lotus Mirage, the modular lighter. Right. Um, Aaron wants to know how many layers of lacquer were on the DuPont thing. Don't know. Skip Martin says that seven will be sold in China, one will be sold in North Korea. I... Here's the thing. DuPont says that they make like eight and 288. I don't actually think they make eight of very much of anything. Um, they said the same thing with the complication lighter. And then they actually like made multiple runs of it. But that's been one of these rare ones of like one out of eight limited editions. They've actually seemingly sold quite a bit of them. I, I don't. I, once again, the over under, I think, is at two and a half of how many of these sets they will sell. Um, they might make three of them but i don't think that there are like eight in production at the moment because I, I think that they've learned that they just can't sell that many of them there aren't that many clients and many of those clients i think are very specific about what they want but maybe the uh the earth one will be uh be the key uh skip also mentioned that they didn't consult uh omar de Fries. danny vasquez asked if there is a lifetime warranty um on i don't know which product but dupont or calibri does not have a lifetime warranty zycar does for the enzo cutter do, do, do. Matt says, my only gripe with the exo cutters is that they feel too thick. I was hoping they could slim down the size, but the plantary gear system, maybe that's just not possible. It's kind of exactly where we were at. Um, do, do, do. But they feel great. All right. So uh, now that we've gotten it out of the way that I was at the Romacraft headquarters before Danny Vasquez, Brooks, can you um, put up slideshow I, so we can talk about the live shows yeah. um so we're gonna get through this real quickly uh we are gonna be back here um on friday uh for the final live show it'll be 20 questions um if you want to submit some of your questions i still don't know how we're gonna do this but i can't um, wait brooks is gonna ask me some questions i'm gonna ask brooks some questions probably fewer of them and then uh we will take questions from the audience uh and it'll be like you know It'll be like question central here. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll kind of answer everything that's appropriate, um, even if it gets us in trouble. Uh, and then on June 27th at 4 p.m. Eastern time, we have the big Facebook show live, live from the Davidoff of Geneva since 1911 Cigar Bar in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, if you are in Las Vegas and would like to stop by, you are more than welcome to. Once again, we are not like setting up refreshments or speakers 
uh, it's more like a, if you would like to come see us, we will have stickers for you, but it may not be the most exciting thing in the world. Um, it and, won't be the most exciting thing in the world. Uh, that begins at 4 p.m. Um, in Las Vegas. That's live from Quasi Trade Show Land. Uh, guests are, we're still finalizing one. Hopefully we'll be able to announce that uh, today or by Friday. Uh, but the guest includes Matt Arcella, who's the owner of the Davidoff store in Las Vegas. We also have Fabian Ziegler from Drew Estate. We have Steve Saka from Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Skip Martin from Romacraft Tobacco. Um, the aforementioned Skip Martin. The aforementioned Skip Martin. And let's see. Uh, I know we also have Dylan Austin from Davidoff, uh, but let's see. Skip. Steve, Matt, Fabian, Dylan. Yeah, and then one more guest. So that would be guest number six. And then once the IPCPR convention trade show starts on June 29th, we will have uh, live shows uh, the first three mornings. So the first one will be with Juan Martinez of Hoyt and Nicaragua. The second one will be with Klaus Peter Kellner of Davidoff. And the third one will be uh, Brooks will be interviewing Carson Serino of Serino, who has still not announced anything for the trade show. Don't make it sound so... Uh so odd that, All right. would be, that would be doing that. And let, for me those, ask you, let me ask you a question okay. real quick. Sorry. We're supposed to be done, but keep going. The Davidoff story, do you have to say Davidoff? Technically, the name is Davidoff of Geneva since 1911. <laughs> Cigar bar. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Sorry. That's the technical name for it. All right. All right. Um, and for those of you that are wondering uh, what the announcement from the IPSPR on their Facebook Live show, which begins in 29 minutes, uh, I suspect you are going to see a new logo. They are rebranding themselves. Um, they will be known. I won't spoil what the name is, but um, my guess is they will like show off a little bit of the logo. We'll see if the uh, Cigar Store Indian continues going forward. Brooks, your thoughts? Do you think the Cigar Store Indian is going to make it? I do, yeah. I, I don't think they would be uh, They would be remiss to uh, to get rid of the Cigar Store Indian. Yeah, I mean. Logo. You've had it long enough. Why not? Thing. But yeah, they are rebranding. We are going to say goodbye to the IPSPR as uh, the name as we know it. Um, and uh Yeah. So we're going to call our coverage something different? or Next year. So this year will still be IPSPR 2019. Next year will be uh, a three-acronym name. Hmm. Not going back to RTDA. They're just going to keep... I wonder if they're like if this is going to be a thing. They're going to change it every decade, like every 10 years. And be like, oh, new name. But anyway, uh, that is it. So until uh, like 47 hours from now, um, I guess keep checking out Half Wheel. We'll have plenty of stories. Uh, there was an Oscar Valadera story that just went up on the site two minutes ago um, about their new cigar or one of their new cigars. We had another one up this morning as well. So anything awesome. else, Brooks? No, I, I think that's plenty. All right. And I will announce the contest winners for this one, as well as the other two Facebook lives, uh, by the end of today, I think. Um, and, uh, we will get your names and then sometime in July, you will get your Drew state prizes. Thank you all for watching. And, uh, until next time. See you.